polysaccharides. Most carbohydrates found in nature occur as polysaccharides, polymers of medium to high molecular weight, Mr. 20, 0, 0, 0. Polysaccharides, also called glycans, differ from each other in the identity of their recurring monosaccharide units, in the length of their chains, in the types of bonds linking the units, and in the degree of branching. Homopolysaccharides contain only a single monomeric species, heteropolysaccharides contain two or more different kinds, fig, 7 to 12. Some homopolysaccharides serve as storage forms of monosaccharides that are used as fuels, starch and glycogen are homopolysaccharides of this type. Other homopolysaccharides, cellulose and chitin, for example, serve as structural elements in plant cell walls and animal exoskeletons. Heteropolysaccharides provide extracellular support for organisms of all kingdoms. For example, the rigid layer of the bacterial cell envelope, the peptidoglycan, is composed in part of a heteropolysaccharide built from two alternating monosaccharide units, see Fig. 6 to 28. In animal tissues, the extracellular space is occupied by several types of heteropolysaccharides, which form a matrix that holds individual cells together and provides protection, shape, and support to cells, tissues, and organs. Figure 7 to 12 homopolysaccharides and heteropolysaccharides. Polysaccharides may be com Unlike proteins, polysaccharides generally do not have defining molecular weights. This difference is a consequence of the mechanisms of assembly of the two types of polymer. As we shall see in Chapter 27, proteins are synthesized on a template, messenger RNA, of defined sequence and length by enzymes that follow the template exactly. For polysaccharide synthesis there is no template, rather, the program for polysaccharide synthesis is intrinsic to the enzymes that catalyze the polymerization of the monomeric units, and there is no specific stopping point in the synthetic process, the products thus vary in length. Some homopolysaccharides are storage forms of fuel. The most important storage polysaccharides are starch in plant cells and glycogen in animal cells. Both polysaccharides occur intracellularly as large clusters or granules. Starch and glycogen molecules are heavily hydrated because they have many exposed hydroxyl groups available to hydrogen bond with water. Most plant cells have the ability to form starch, see fig, 25, and starch storage is especially abundant in tubers, underground stems, such as potatoes, and in seeds. Starch contains two types of glucose polymer, amylose and amylopectin, fig, 7 to 13. Amylose consists of long, unbranched chains of D-glucose residues connected by alpha-1,4 linkages, as in maltose. Such chains vary in molecular weight from a few thousand to more than a million. Amylopectin also has a high molecular weight, up to 200 million, but unlike amylose is highly branched. The glycosidic linkages joining successive glucose residues in amylopectin chains are alpha-1,4, the branch points, occurring every 24 to 30 residues, are alpha-1,6 linkages. Figure 7 to 13 glycogen. Mobilization of starch for energy. Glycogen is the main storage polysaccharide of animal cells. Like amylopectin, glycogen is a polymer of alpha-1,4 linked glucose subunits with alpha-1,6 linked branches but glycogen is more extensively branched, on average, a branch every 8 to 12 residues, and more compact than starch. Glycogen is especially abundant in the liver, where it may constitute as much as 7% of the wet weight, it is also present in skeletal muscle. In hepatocytes glycogen is found in large granules, see fig, 15 to 26, which are clusters of smaller granules composed of single, highly branched glycogen molecules with an average molecular weight of several million. The large glycogen granules also contain, in tightly bound form, the enzymes responsible for the synthesis and degradation of glycogen, see Fig. 15 to 42. Because each branch in glycogen ends with a non-reducing sugar unit, a glycogen molecule with N branches has N plus 1 non-reducing ends, but only one. Reducing end. When glycogen is used as an energy source, glucose units are removed one at a time from the non-reducing ends. 
Degradative enzymes that act only at non-reducing ends can work simultaneously on the many branches, speeding the conversion of the polymer to monosaccharides. Why not store glucose in its monomeric form? It has been calculated that hepatocytes store glycogen equivalent to a glucose concentration of 0.4 m. The actual concentration of glycogen, which is insoluble and contributes little to the osmolarity of the cytosol, is about 0.01 mu m. If the cytosol contains 0.4 m glucose, the osmolarity would be threateningly elevated, leading to osmotic entry of water that might rupture the cell, see Fig, 2 to 13. Furthermore, with an intracellular glucose concentration of 0.4 m and an external concentration of about 5 mm, the concentration in the blood of a mammal, the free energy change for glucose uptake into cells against this very high concentration gradient would be prohibitively large. Dextrins are bacterial and yeast polysaccharides made up of alpha-1,6. Linked poly-D glucose all have alpha-1,3 branches, and some also have alpha-1,2 or alpha-1,4 branches. Dental plaque, formed by bacteria growing on the surface of teeth, is rich in dextrins, which are adhesive and allow the bacteria to stick to teeth and to each other. Dextrins also provide a source of glucose for bacterial metabolism. Synthetic dextrins are components of several commercial products, for example, Cephadex, used in the fractionation of proteins by size exclusion chromatography, see Fig. 3-17b. The dextrins in these products are chemically cross-linked to form insoluble materials of various sizes. Some homopolysaccharides serve structural roles. Cellulose, a tough, fibrous, water-insoluble substance, is found in the cell walls of plants, particularly in stalks, stems, trunks, and all the woody portions of the plant body. Cellulose constitutes much of the mass of wood, and cotton is almost pure cellulose. Like amylose, the cellulose molecule is a linear, unbranched homopolysaccharide, consisting of 10,000 to 15,000 D-glucose units. But there is a very important difference, in cellulose the glucose residues have the beta configuration, fig. 7 to 14, whereas in amylose the glucose is in the alpha configuration. The glucose residues in cellulose are linked by beta-1-4 glycosidic bonds in contrast to the alpha-1-4 bonds of amylose. This difference causes individual molecules of cellulose and amylose to fold differently in space, giving them very different macroscopic structures and physical properties, see below. The tough, fibrous nature of cellulose makes it useful in such commercial products as cardboard and insulation material. And it is a major constituent of cotton and linen fabrics. Cellulose is also the starting material for the commercial production of cellophane, rayon, and lyocell. Figure 7 Glycogen and starch ingested in the diet are hydrolyzed by alpha amylases and glycosidases, enzymes in saliva, and the small intestine that break, alpha-1-4, glycosidic bonds between glucose units. Most vertebrate animals cannot use cellulose as a fuel source, because they lack an enzyme to hydrolyze the beta-1-4 linkages. Termites readily digest cellulose, and therefore would, but only because their intestinal tract harbors a symbiotic microorganism, trichonympha, that secretes cellulase, which hydrolyzes the beta-1-4 linkages, fig, 7-15. Molecular genetic studies have revealed that genes encoding cellulose-degrading enzymes are present in the genomes of a wide range of invertebrate animals, including arthropods and nematodes. There is one important exception to the absence of cellulase in vertebrates. Ruminant animals such as cattle, sheep, and goats harbor symbiotic microorganisms in the rumen, the first of their four stomach compartments, that can hydrolyze cellulose, allowing the animal to degrade dietary cellulose from soft grasses, but not from woody plants. Fermentation in the rumen yields acetate, propionate, and beta-hydroxybutyrate, which the animal uses to synthesize the sugars in milk. Biomass that is rich in cellulose can be used as starting material for the fermentation of carbohydrates to ethanol, to be used as a gasoline additive. Switchgrass is a common biofuel crop. The annual production of biomass. On Earth, accomplished primarily by photosynthetic organisms, 
is the energetic equivalent of nearly a trillion barrels of crude oil when converted to ethanol by fermentation. Because of their potential use in biomass conversion to bioenergy, cellulose-degrading enzymes such as cellulase are under vigorous investigation. Supermolecular complexes called cellulosomes, found on the outside surface of the bacterium Clostridium cellulolyticum, include the catalytic subunit of cellulase, along with proteins that hold one or more cellulase molecules to the bacterial surface, and a subunit that binds cellulose and positions it in the catalytic site. Figure 7 to 15 Cellulose Breakdown by Trichinympha A. The termite cryptoterms domesticus gnaws off and ingests particles, teams with bacteria. A major fraction of photosynthetic biomass is the woody portion of plants and trees, which consists of cellulose plus several other polymers derived from carbohydrates that are not easily digestible, either chemically or biologically. Lignins, for example, make up some 30% of the mass of wood. Synthesized from precursors that include phenylalanine and glucose, lignins are complex polymers with covalent crosslinks to cellulose that complicate the digestion of cellulose by cellulase. If woody plants are to be used in the production of ethanol from biomass, better means of digesting wood components will need to be found. Chitin is a linear homopolysaccharide composed of N-acetylglucosamine residues in beta-1-4 linkage fig 7 to 16. The only chemical difference from cellulose is the replacement of the hydroxyl group at C2 with an acetylated amino group. Chitin forms extended fibers similar to those of cellulose and like cellulose cannot be digested by vertebrates. Chitin is the principal component of the hard exoskeletons of nearly a million species of arthropods insects, lobsters, and crabs, for example, and is probably the second most abundant polysaccharide, next to cellulose, in nature. An estimated 1 billion tons of chitin are produced in the biosphere each year. Figure 7. Steric factors and hydrogen bonding influence. Homopolysaccharide folding. The folding of polysaccharides in three dimensions follows the same principles as those governing polypeptide structure. Subunits with a more or less rigid structure dictated by covalent bonds form three-dimensional macromolecular structures that are stabilized by weak interactions within or between molecules, such as hydrogen bonds, interactions due to the hydrophobic effect, van der Waals interactions, and for polymers with charged subunits, electrostatic interactions. Because polysaccharides have so many hydroxyl groups, hydrogen bonding has an especially important influence on their structure. Glycogen, starch, and cellulose are composed of pyranicide, six-membered ring, subunits, as are the oligosaccharides of glycoproteins and glycolipids, to be discussed later. Such molecules can be represented as a series of rigid pyranose rings connected by an oxygen atom bridging two carbon atoms, the glycosidic bond. There is, in principle, free rotation about both CO bonds linking the residues, fig, 7 to 14, but as in polypeptides, see figs 4 to 2, 4 to 9, rotation about each bond is limited by steric hindrance by substituents. The three-dimensional structures of these molecules can be described in terms of the dihedral angles, phi and psi, about the glycosidic bond, fig, 7 to 17, analogous to angles phi and psi made by the peptide bond. The bulkiness of the pyranose ring and its substituents, along with electronic effects at the anomeric carbon, place constraints on the angles phi and psi, thus certain conformations are much more stable than others, as can be shown on a map of energy as a function of phi and psi, fig. 7 to 18. Figure 7 to 17 conformation at the glycosidic bond and dextrin. Glycosidic. There is also omega. Figure 7. The most stable three dimensional structure for the alpha 1 4 linked chains of starch and glycogen is a tightly coiled helix, fig. 7 to 19, stabilized by interchain hydrogen bonds. In amylose with no branches, this structure is regular enough to allow crystallization and thus determination of the structure by X-ray diffraction. The average plane of each residue along the amylose chain forms a 60 degrees angle with the average plane of the preceding residue, so the helical structure has six residues per turn. For amylose, the core of the helix is of precisely the right dimensions to accommodate iodine as complex ions, giving an intensely blue complex. This interaction is a 
Common qualitative test for amylose. For cellulose, the most stable conformation is that in which each chair is turned 180 degrees relative to its neighbors, yielding a straight, extended chain. All OH groups are available for hydrogen bonding with neighboring chains. With several chains lying side by side, a stabilizing network of interchain and intracane hydrogen bonds produces straight, stable supramolecular fibers of great tensile strength, Fig. 7 to 20. This property of cellulose has made it useful to civilizations for millennia. Many manufactured products, including papyrus, paper, cardboard, rayon, insulating tiles, and a variety of other useful materials, are derived from cellulose. The water content of these materials is low because extensive interchain hydrogen bonding between cellulose molecules satisfies their capacity for hydrogen bond formation. Figure 7 to 19. Figure 7 to 20. Bacterial and algal cell walls contain structural heteropolysaccharides. The rigid component of bacterial cell walls, peptidoglycan, is a heteropolymer of alternating, beta 1 4, linked N acetylglucosamine and N acetylmeramic acid residues, C fig, 20 to 30. The linear polymers lie side by side in the cell wall, cross linked by short peptides the exact structure of which depends on the bacterial species. The peptide crosslinks weld the polysaccharide chains into a strong sheath, peptidoglycan, that envelopes the entire cell and prevents cellular swelling and lysis due to the osmotic entry of water. The enzyme lysozyme kills bacteria by hydrolyzing the beta-1-4 glycosidic bond between N-acetylglucosamine and N-acetylmeramic acid, C-fig, 6-28. The enzyme is found in human tears, where it is presumably a defense against bacterial infections of the eye, and is also produced by certain bacterial viruses to ensure their release from the host bacterial cell, an essential step of the viral infection cycle. Penicillin and related antibiotics kill bacteria by preventing synthesis of the peptidoglycan crosslinks, leaving the cell wall too weak to resist osmotic lysis, p. 223. Certain marine red algae, including some of the seaweeds, have cell walls that contain agar, a mixture of sulfated heteropolysaccharides made up of D-galactose and an L-galactose derivative ether linked between C3 and C6. Agar is a complex mixture of polysaccharides, all with the same backbone structure, but substituted to varying degrees with sulfate and pyruvate. Agarose, Mr. 150-000, is the agar component with the fewest charged groups, sulfates, pyruvates, fig, 7 to 21. The remarkable gel forming property of agarose makes it useful in the biochemistry laboratory. When a suspension of agarose in water is heated and cooled, the agarose forms a double helix. Two molecules in parallel orientation twist together with a helix repeat of three residues, water molecules are trapped in the central cavity. These structures in turn associate with each other to form a gel a three-dimensional matrix that traps large amounts of water. Agarose gels are used as inert supports for the electrophoretic separation of nucleic acids. Agar is also used to form a surface for the growth of bacterial colonies. Another commercial use of agar is for the capsules in which some vitamins and drugs are packaged. The dried agar material dissolves readily in the stomach and is metabolically inert. Figure 7. Glycosaminoglycans are heteropolysaccharides of the extracellular matrix. The extracellular space in the tissues of multicellular animals is filled with a gel-like material, the extracellular matrix, ECM, also called ground substance, which holds the cells together and provides a porous pathway for the diffusion of nutrients and oxygen to individual cells. The ECM that surrounds fibroblasts and other connective tissue cells is composed of an interlocking meshwork of heteropolysaccharides and fibrous proteins such as fibrillar collagens, elastins, and fibronectins. Basement membrane is a specialized ECM that underlies epithelial cells. It consists of specialized collagens, laminins, and heteropolysaccharides. These heteropolysaccharides, the glycosaminoglycans, are a family of linear polymers composed of repeating disaccharide units, Fig. 7 to 22. They are unique to animals and bacteria and are not found in plants. 
One of the two monosaccharides is always either N-acetylglucosamine or N-acetylgalactosamine, the other is in. Most cases a uronic acid, usually D-glucuronic or L-iduronic acid. Some glycosaminoglycans contain esterified sulfate groups. The combination of sulfate groups and the carboxylate groups of the uronic acid residues gives glycosaminoglycans a very high density of negative charge. To minimize the repulsive forces among neighboring charged groups, these molecules assume an extended conformation in solution, forming a rod-like helix in which the negatively charged carboxylate groups occur on alternate sides of the helix, as shown for heparin in Fig. 7 to 22. The extended rod form also provides maximum separation between the negatively charged sulfate groups. The specific patterns of sulfated and non-sulfated sugar residues in glycosaminoglycans allow specific recognition by a variety of protein ligands that bind electrostatically to these molecules. The sulfated glycosaminoglycans are attached to extracellular proteins to form proteoglycans, section 7.3. The glycosaminoglycan hyaluronin, hyaluronic acid, contains alternating residues of D-glucuronic acid and N-acetylglucosamine, Fig. 7. 22. With up to 50,000 repeats of the basic disaccharide unit, hyaluronin has a molecular weight of several million. It forms clear, highly viscous, non-compressible solutions that serve as lubricants in the synovial fluid of joints and give the vitreous humor of the vertebrate eye its jelly-like consistency. The Greek hyalos means glass, hyaluronin can have a glassy or translucent appearance. Hyaluronin is also a component of the ECM of cartilage and tendons, to which it contributes tensile strength and elasticity as a result of its strong non-covalent interactions with other components of the matrix. Hyaluronidase, an enzyme secreted by some pathogenic bacteria, can hydrolyze the glycosidic linkages of hyaluronin, rendering tissues more susceptible to bacterial invasion. In many animal species, a similar enzyme in sperm hydrolyzes the outer glycosaminoglycan coat around an ovum, allowing sperm penetration. Figure 7 to 20. Other, other glycosaminoglycans differ from hyaluronin in three respects. They are generally much shorter polymers, they are covalently linked to specific proteins, proteoglycans, and one or both monomeric units differ from those of hyaluronin. Chondroitin sulfate, Greek chondros, cartilage, contributes to the tensile strength of cartilage, tendons, ligaments, heart valves, and the walls of the aorta. Dermatan sulfate, Greek derma, skin, contributes to the pliability of skin, and is also present in blood vessels and heart valves. In this polymer, many of the glucuronate residues present in chondroitin sulfate are replaced by their C5-epimer, L-iduronate, EDOA. Keratin sulfates, Greek keras, horn, have no uronic acid, and their sulfate content is variable. They are present in cornea, cartilage, bone, and a variety of horny structures formed from dead cells, horn, hair, hoofs, nails, and claws. Heparin sulfate, Greek hepar, liver, it was originally isolated from dog liver, is produced by all animal cells, and contains variable arrangements of sulfated and non-sulfated sugars. The sulfated segments of the chain allow it to interact with a large number of proteins, including growth factors and ECM components, as well as various enzymes and factors present in plasma. Heparin is a highly sulfated, intracellular form of heparin sulfate produced primarily by mast cells, a type of leukocyte, or immune cell. Its physiological role is not yet clear, but purified heparin is used as a therapeutic agent to inhibit coagulation of blood through its capacity to bind the protease inhibitor antithrombin, see Fig. 7 to 27. Table 7. Polymer. Starch. Amylose homo, alpha 1 4. Amylo up to 1, blood, up to cellular, chitin, dextrin homo, wide range, 4, more, agarose, 1,000, hyaluron, heterodac, a uh, each pop, be the abbreviated names for the peptide. Table 7 to 2 summarizes the composition, properties, roles, and occurrence of the polysaccharides described in section 7.2. Summary 7.2 Polysaccharides 
Polysaccharides, glycans, serve as stored fuel and as structural components of cell walls and extracellular matrix. The homopolysaccharide starch and glycogen are storage fuels in plant, animal, and bacterial cells. They consist of D-glucose units with alpha-1,4 linkages and both contain some branches. The homopolysaccharide cellulose, chitin, and dextrin serve structural roles. Cellulose, composed of beta-1,4, linked D-glucose residues, lends strength and rigidity to plant cell walls. Chitin, a polymer of beta-1,4, linked N-acetylglucosamine, strengthens the exoskeletons of arthropods. Dextrin forms an adhesive coat around certain bacteria. Homopolysaccharides fold in three dimensions. The chair form of the pyranos ring is essentially rigid, so the conformation of the polymers is determined by rotation about the bonds from the rings to the oxygen atom of the glycosidic linkage. Starch and glycogen form helical structures with intracane hydrogen bonding. Cellulose and chitin form long, straight strands that interact with neighboring strands. Bacterial and algal cell walls are strengthened by heteropolysaccharides peptidoglycan in bacteria, agar in red algae. The repeating disaccharide in peptidoglycan is GLCNAC, beta-1,4, more 2AC in agar, it is DGAL, beta-1,4, 3, 6N hydroalgal. Glycosaminoglycans are extracellular heteropolysaccharides in which one of the two monosaccharide units is a uronic acid, keratin sulfate is an exception and the other is an inacetylated amino sugar. Sulfate esters on some of the hydroxyl groups and on the amino group of some glucosamine. Residues in heparin and heparin sulfate give these polymers a high density of negative charge, forcing them to assume extended conformations. These Polymers, hyaluronin, chondroitin sulfate, dermatan sulfate, and keratin. Sulfate, provide viscosity, adhesiveness, and tensile strength to the extracellular matrix. 7.3 glycoconjugates, proteoglycans.